Good morning. And welcome today, I'm honestly not even sure what day we're on, of the cross-country road trip all the way from Key West, Florida up to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, while living out of the back of my van. Knock the hat off. So I think we've been on the road for roughly a month, give or take a few days. And we've got just about two and a half months left until we hopefully make it all the way up to Alaska. Last night, we slept out in yet another rest stop because I had a lot of people correcting me in my other videos saying that these are rest stops, not truck stops. And I know that, I just use them interchangeably because they're basically the same thing except one is a gas station and one isn't. But either way, we're at a rest stop. It's kind of a cool rest stop. I'll take you guys outside real quick. Bunch of cool like uh, rock formations kind of all around it. There's some on the other side too, but kind of reminds me almost of like a Joshua Tree or something like that. If you guys have been to Joshua Tree, all those boulder type sandstone looking rocks. But yeah, also some pretty nice views down there and then across there over to the valley and the mountains. But other than that, this just like pretty much every rest stop in the country doesn't really have much to offer. Just some bathrooms, some vending machines and some parking lots where you can sleep. And this one was actually pretty unlevel. So I'm like tilted down to the left a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. All right, let's get out of this rest stop and start headed towards where we're spending our day in Tucson, Arizona. So since the last time you guys saw me, we've driven another three hours northwestern towards Tucson from that spot in the desert that I had where I was playing video games in the desert just outside of El Paso. Which means that we've tacked on a couple hundred more miles on our journey from Key West to Alaska. And my total so far, according to my car, is 4,934.4 miles driven total on our trip. So I've got about an hour drive into the city. And check out this view. I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see it, but you got mountain ranges off in the distance. It looks beautiful. But anyways, got about an hour drive, so I will check in with you guys once I get a little bit closer. Okay, so we've made it to Tucson, and the first stop is El Charo Cafe. Because I started my day a little late here filming, so it's just about lunchtime. And since we're in Tucson, which is supposedly the home of the chimichanga. I figured I needed some lunch, so I might as well go to the place that supposedly invented the chimichanga and get some Mexican food. Also, this is one of the most highly rated restaurants in Tucson, so I figured I'd go check it out. Can I shoot a table for one? Um, I don't have anything right now. You can wait out front if you want. Okay. okay. There's a menu, my friend. Thank you very much. All right, so since it's President's Day, and this is one of the most popular restaurants in Tucson, there was a bit of a wait, so just sitting outside of the patio space. I got some time to look at the menu and figure out what I want to get. There we go. We got a table quick because we're a party one. Right there, sir. Right around the window? Thank you very much. I feel like since we're here, we gotta get a chimichanga. They're just so bad for you. Right, here we go. Thank you very much. Of course, and are we ready to order? Would you like a few more minutes? I think I'm ready. Okay. Is it true that this place invented the chimichanga? Yes. Really? That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, what chimichanga would you recommend? Um, oh, so I think that the quesadilla is probably my favorite. Okay, I'll get that then. Thank you very much. There we go. I figured, I guess, since we're here at the home of the chimichanga, I might as well get one. We'll just have to work those calories off later. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You want me to take this? Uh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. This thing is massive. Look at that. Beautiful chimichanga. Cheers. That's pretty good. Wow. I don't think I've ever had a chimichanga before, but that is extremely good. The meat has so much flavor. I'm not sure what this sauce is, but this is really good too. This thing is like massive though, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish the whole thing. So another fun fact about this place, it's the oldest Mexican restaurant in America that's been continuously run by a single family, which is pretty cool, and it's over 100 years old. 
they actually celebrated their 100 year anniversary last year. 100 years later, still pumping out delicious food. And I'm definitely not gonna be able to finish the second half of this burrito, so I think I'm gonna need a box. All right, we got our burrito to go. Let's get out of here. So there were a few other places in Tucson that I wanted to check out while I was here, but a lot of things are closed because it's President's Day. So I think I'm just gonna go check out the Trail Dust Town, which is this old Western themed shopping center that looked pretty cool when I looked it up. So I'm gonna head over there and check that out. And then we're gonna find a place to stealth camp in the city tonight and try to cook up some of our own Tex-Mex in the form of fajitas. Cause I got a bunch of thin cut uh, steak in the fridge that I need to use. So that's the plan for dinner tonight. It's so crazy. I don't think I'll ever get over how beautiful some of these cities are out west with mountains right next to them. It just looks so cool and it's nothing. Like cities on the east coast, there aren't really many mountains out there other than the uh, Appalachians, which are nothing compared to some of the mountains out here. All right, so it should be right in here. Definitely looks like a uh, old western town. Although it doesn't look like there is a ton of people here. All right, so I just looked it up and I gotta start doing this before I actually pull up to places, but it doesn't open until 5 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday and it is currently four. So I'm just gonna head over to the grocery store real quick, get the stuff we need for dinner. And then by the time we get back here, it should be open. And luckily right next door, there's an Albertsons. Thank you. Alright, so since we got 30 minutes till that place opens, and I should probably get this steak marinating as early as possible, I'm gonna make the marinade real quick for my steak, get that in the fridge and ready to go so that we can just cook it up later tonight and eat. So I'm not sure if this is the perfect type of steak to use. Four fajitas, I bought it for a stir fry, but I feel like it should be good enough to use and I need to use it because I don't want it to go bad anyway. So that's what we're using. So for the marinade we need, a third of a cup of lime juice, fourth of a cup of pineapple juice, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoons of olive oil, tablespoon of minced garlic, two teaspoons of cumin and chili powder, a teaspoon of paprika and salt, some red pepper flakes, and some ground pepper. And we can mix that together and add in our steak and let it marinate in the fridge for a couple hours before we eat dinner tonight. And break that up and get it fully coated. Just like that, now we can get these covered and put in the fridge. And this steak is a little bit thinner than I think typical fajitas would be, but it's just the steak that I had. And honestly, it's probably just gonna be more flavorful because the steak is so thin. So it's gonna really absorb that marinade when I put it in the fridge. So hopefully it's good. All right, now let's get all this cleaned up and go check out that old town. All right, so I've got everything cleaned up and it is 515. So let's head over there and see what this old western town's all about. I also had to take my jacket off because it's actually kind of warm today in Tucson, which is nice for a change. So I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what's here. I didn't even really look it up before I came. I just saw it on the maps and thought it looked cool, but it does look like they have a little train system goes into that barn over there that you can ride or something but so this is it little old western town <laughs> in the middle of tucson it looks like someone is getting proposed to that's cute so i don't know what open at five means because a lot of these stores still have closed signs on their doors like the general store is closed all of the restaurants are closed uh i guess maybe because it's president's day i don't know not too sure but nothing here is open at all yeah i guess this time of year Everything's just closed. They got the little tiny wooden Ferris wheel boarded up, the carousel's not on, so. Yeah, so it looks like I guess everything's mostly open from Thursday 
through Sunday, five to nine. So Monday is pretty much the worst day to be here. Look who FaceTimed me. <laughs> my beautiful girlfriend. All right, so I was talking to my girlfriend for a little bit, but pretty much the only thing that you can check out here is this little how you folks doing? Jail cell with this creepy dude. Where are you folks visiting from? Sitting in the corner talking to you about stuff. But yeah, would be a cool little stop if stuff was open. But since it's not, we're gonna head back to the van and go find our stealth camping spot, hopefully somewhere nearby. So a lot of the times, stealth camping in cities isn't the most glamorous. And a lot of the times it's just on the side of the street somewhere near a park or in a residential area. So I'm gonna pull out my phone and see where I can find. All right, so I think I found a spot that on my, uh, that in my app is labeled lawful street parking. And it's one of the only spots actually in Tucson. There's not a lot of spots here, but looks like from the pictures, it's just kind of on the side of the road somewhere here in the city. So let's go see if we can find it. So I think this is it right here. It's actually not a bad view down the street of the mountains, but it's next to these apartment complexes on the side of the road. And there are no signs here saying no parking or anything with any kind of time limit. So I think we're good to call this home. So it's just right off the main road right there on the side of the road. And this is where we are going to be stealth camping tonight. And I get a lot of comments on my videos saying that this isn't a stealth rig or can't stealth camp in a ProMaster or anything like that, especially when they have the roof vent fans and the, and the solar panels on top. But when you're walking next to it like this, unless you really know what you're looking for, you wouldn't even really notice the max air fans or the solar panels because they blend in so well. So it's kind of like you only really know if you know that someone's living in there, which majority of the population doesn't, which is why I call my van a stealth van. So it's actually kind of warm in the back of the van, so I opened up my vent pans. I got my vent blowing for the first time in a while, but it's almost about to be nighttime. The sun is just about to set right now, already has set, but I'm honestly still kind of full from that half burrito I had earlier, so I'm gonna give this take a little bit more time to marinate in the fridge and hop on Xbox and kill an hour playing some video games, and then we're making fajitas. I think it's just about time to get off, make some dinner. 7.30 and I'm starting to get hungry. So the only thing I really have left to do is to prep all these veggies, this pepper, these bell peppers, and then these onions. And I'm also gonna take the steak out, and let it cool down to room temperature. So before I cut these onions, I already know that they're gonna make my eyes burn. And I had a couple of people commenting suggestions for how to help with that. And one of them was to get a wet paper towel and set it on the cutting board next to the onions. And the idea is, is that this wet paper towel will absorb all of the stuff that makes you cry. And I can definitely feel my eyes starting to burn. Oh, my eyes. It's like they're being assaulted. Come on, peel. I can't see. Jesus. Ah. I gotta turn the paint on. Ah. Ah. Oh my God, this is the worst it's ever been. Whew. Feels a lot better with that fan on. All right, onions done, onto the peppers. All right, now that we've got our beautiful rainbow of vegetables all prepped and ready to go, basically all I gotta do is cook the steak and then cook the vegetables, so.
All right, we've got the oil nice and hot. Let's throw these in there. They're not gonna need to cook for very long because they are very thin. Got them all in there. Now we'll let these fry up real quick. And then we're gonna cook the veggies in this exact same pan once we pull these out. All right, I think that should be good enough. And then I'll just use all this stuff that I have left over and chop it up and throw it in salads or breakfast or something. I'm gonna put the meat back in real quick just to warm it up. Was he? So, I think for the rest of this trip, I'm gonna need your guys' help with finding things to go check out and places to see. And I kind of want to see all of the weird, obscure, kind of different places along with all of the more popular national park type things. So if you guys know anywhere from Tucson, Arizona, all the way up to Alaska, that's worth stopping or worth checking out, some quirky hole in the wall restaurant or or some cool like off the wall spot that you guys think I should check out, please send me an email, DM me on Instagram or get in contact with me somehow so that I can come and check out some of those cool spots. That might not necessarily be on Google Maps or at the top of things to do when you Google an area because I got a lot of time and I'm gonna be zigzagging around a bunch so I can jump off course to go check out something but my basic route is from here in Tucson, Arizona up north through southern Utah to hang out for a couple weeks, check out the Mighty Five and then from there I'm gonna go to northern Utah, Idaho, Montana, um, maybe Yellowstone, the Tetons, up through Banff, Calgary, Edmonton, and then on the highway up north towards Fairbanks, Alaska. And then hopefully we'll be able to make it up to Prudhoe Bay. So yeah, that's the plan. Send me an email, DM me. Let's work something out. Also, these fajitas are actually fire. All right. I think we've gotten to that point of the video where it's getting late. I've got a mess to clean up in the kitchen. It's actually not that bad today compared to other days, but I got some dishes to do, but I'm going to get that cleaned up and then probably just go to bed. So I will catch you guys in the morning. Slept pretty good last night. It was pretty quiet. Not too many people were driving down that kind of main road out there. It also looks like there might be a storm rolling in or something. Anyways, I gotta get up because I have got to keep driving north. So I actually got an oil change the day that I left on this trip and it's only been just about a month and I already need another one. So I think that's what I'm gonna do today. And I also got this vanilla coffee concentrate that I've been trying out for the past couple days. It's actually pretty good. You just add a tablespoon and a half of this into your cup and then add water and you got a nice iced coffee. And I like to add one packet of sweet and low because I think it makes it taste way better. And there we go. Perfect iced coffee in the morning. But anyways, I think it's time that I head out of this spot, get myself an oil change, and then there's a couple other chores that I gotta do. Um, as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help. And I will catch you guys next time.